Well, hey everyone, how you doing today? It's Simeon back with you. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to go back a little bit in history and talk about where Cold Fusion came from a couple decades ago and where we are with it now. If you haven't seen my previous videos about Cold Fusion, you could just click on the link right up there and you'll be taken to the previous one I did just a couple weeks ago. You know, I came across this really interesting video here on YouTube called Cold Fusion Heavy Watergate, you know, which is really funny title because Cold Fusion uses a type of heavy water deuterium. I learned something really interesting from this video, which is something I didn't even know, which is that President Bush at the time that Cold Fusion was discovered in 1989, Senior Bush, George Walker Bush, actually had his Secretary of Energy appoint a commission, a panel, to look at the claims of Fleischmann's and Ponds from the University of Utah in Salt Lake to look at the claims that they discovered signs of anomalous heat. But the people that were appointed to this commission, apparently within two weeks, were all proponents of hot fusion. You know, these big, expensive, billion-dollar reactors that we've been told would produce heat like the sun with no, you know, fusion without any radioactivity. At the time, they hadn't produced any heat. And as the time of the taping of this video, it actually has progressed from there. They've gotten it working for a whole trillionth of a second of excess heat, but not much more than that. So it's still not looking all that promising. However, the hot fusion people, as you can imagine, had billions of dollars coming into their universities and research institutes and government labs to promote hot fusion. So if you put these people in charge of evaluating cold fusion, what do you think you're going to find? It's not much different than having oil executives uh, evaluate a new energy source that might compete with their source of funding. In any case, this team, this panel went to MIT and had them perform studies of the cold fusion apparatus that Fleischmann and Pons were using. And believe it or not, they found signs of anomalous heat in their experiments. But in the final data that they presented to the presidential panel, they omitted the data that showed excess heat, so it just looked like a flat line with no sign of excess heat at all. Essentially, what they did is eliminate the outliers. And I can tell you, speaking as a statistician, that is something you can get away with sometimes if you really feel the outliers don't represent the data at all. But you would hardly do that in the case of evaluating a new energy source. You'd be looking for the outliers. That would be the exact purpose of doing such an experiment. The only reason they would have out eliminated and cut out the outliers is they didn't want to find any effect, which means they were biased from the beginning. And to me, that sounds like fraud. And in fact, there was an investigation of this MIT group that did the examination of the cold fusion apparatus. And apparently those people too were hot fusion people. So again, they're biased towards their own source of funding. So what we really see here is a consistent pattern of bias and fraud against an honest evaluation of cold fusion. There was another example of this with the case of John O'Meara Bacharis at the University of Texas A&M College Station who found evidence of tritium in his attempt to reproduce cold fusion. Now tritium would be one of the signs that you had actually created a nuclear reaction and had some nuclear byproducts. O'Meara, a really wonderful guy if you've seen him interviewed and he wrote hundreds of papers, a really accomplished scholar and even a book about science and new science. Um, he was actually investigated by his own university for fraud because he was accused by none other than Science Magazine, who I've had a subscription to for over 25 years. Science Magazine accused him of placing the tritium in the cold fusion apparatus or one of his research assistants. He was investigated not just once, but three times by his own university for fraud. And in the end, he was, in the end, he was completely exonerated because there is a tritium byproduct when you do cold fusion. So you have a case of a university, Science Magazine, which is a part of the, the American Association for the Advancement of Science and MIT, 
and numerous other labs, including Caltech, you could really say there was an organized conspiracy to kill cold fusion right from the beginning because they didn't want to find an alternative energy source. But here we are several decades later and we're having increasing evidence just shows us that not only does cold fusion work, like we heard from Dr. Vittorio Violante from ENEA in Italy, hot fusion people who were honest and looked at the data and told us to our faces honestly that it works, cold fusion is real. And then you had all these other uh, institutions and academic universities which had a vested interest in not finding the cold fusion results. And this is, seems to me why it's taken decades for us to actually find out that cold fusion reactions are real. There are other ways of doing it, like we're finding out with Lenner low energy nuclear reaction and the ECAT, that these processes have been real the whole time. And what we found is a very established mindset in the existing scientific establishment that did not want to find positive results for cold fusion. So you really need to ask yourself, if they didn't want to find it for cold fusion and it's taken us decades to find out the truth that it really works and devices are actually being created right now that could sustainably produce energy. What other topics have we been told the same thing about that in the end we're gonna find are really true? So it's something to think about and to be very uh, skeptical and critical when you hear these science authorities telling you that something can't be true when you actually find out evidence from honest scientists that it is true. Okay, so I thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks very much uh, for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Take care for now and bye.